As you may know, I've done quite a bit when it comes to the criticism of Kevin Samuels, the self-proclaimed yet uncertified dating and image coach slash consultant. I have a visceral response to his brand because this fraud father of an influencer gallivants as a well-intentioned person, quote, trying to restore the black family, when in reality, one only need look at two to four years of his social media history to understand that he truly hates black women in his heart of hearts and exhibits attributes of a subsection of gay men who suffer from something referred to as vagina envy. However, the former cosmetics counter girl who, according to DJ Envy himself, used to hang out at the entrance of Hermes looking for high value men has had an effect that I personally would like to praise. You see, African-American men, as well as Caribbean men from the chattel form of slavery leading to the first African diaspora, are some of the most homophobic men on the planet. Some of our favorite songs in the diaspora are actually about killing gay men. Gay men themselves know the lyrics, they know the words, and they sing along. Again, it's part of our culture. The Black Manosphere, as early as just a couple of years ago, used to hatefully berate Kevin Samuels with all kinds of homophobic slurs. He would be frequent on, um, I don't know, Obsidian News Talk Media show uh, these panels with half a dozen other men or more who would call him gay and therefore not only insignificant, but entirely irrelevant. However, what a gay black man can do that a straight black man or woman cannot is read you for filth until you crave the grave. Sexuality aside, Kevin has been reading the literal life out of heterosexual black women. And the black males love it. So much so that this bashing of black women has cured their homophobia almost overnight. They defend Kevin Samuel saying the things we women would normally say, like, why does it matter if he's gay or straight? Who cares? Is what he says true or not? Now, as far as I know, this man is a metrosexual and not a homosexual. However, African-American gay social media personalities like Funky Dineva have publicly called Kevin a sissy and other gay jargon specific phrases conveying that it takes one to know one. In other words, that although he can fool the masses, he cannot fool his own reflection, which are other gay black males. Now, here's my angle. Gay black men are some of the strongest, most formidable black men in the black community. Their rite of passage begins sometimes as early as three and four year old children expressing effeminate behaviors only to be beaten, brutalized, scrutinized their entire lives by all manner of people in hopes of beating the gay head of them. Black gay men as children pay a lofty price for how they were born. No black man in his right mind would choose to be gay. It is an awful set of circumstances when it comes to intersectional identity replete with racism in all forms of bigotry from within and without. Gay black men have endured a rejection so severe from the black community that their struggle, in my opinion, is on par with that of the dark skinned black woman. Only, of course, if the man is, you know, identifiably effeminate. After all, some, great, some gay men are incredibly masculine and even brutish dominant alpha males. You need look no further than your nearest prison to understand that some of the worst goons to be feared and revered are indeed the booty goons who will rape and kill men as hired hitmen. Oftentimes, for our black women, our gay best friend is the man we never had. 
looking after our children as single mothers, showing up to piano and dance recitals, loud as hell in the crowd, letting our children know they are appreciated and feminine enough to hold us as we cry, understanding our tears, our fears, when it comes to certain segments of heterosexual black males. Oftentimes, we find a black gay bestie of a black woman beating the pulp out of a black baby daddy or ex running to the aid of his black girl best friend in honor of black womanhood, upholding black womanhood in a way that so many heterosexual black males, for whatever really reason, are unwilling to do. The demographics of the following of Eddie Avim a seven foot, I hate when people call him Eddie Adhim. I'm sorry, it's an Arabic word, and I just, Avim, v, v, Avim, okay? I understand not all of us are Arabic speakers, but it's like, uh, never mind, call him Adhim, I don't care. Okay, so the demographics of the following of Eddie Avim, a seven foot African American giant paired with a wealthy white, or did he say Asian? Paired with a wealthy non-black male is no surprise, okay? So the demographics of Eddie Avim, as in his following, is no surprise, right? Full of black women, heterosexual black women. That's because generations of alliance has been built between the unambiguously black woman and the gay man. The gay black man, excuse me. Because white gay men, y'all are y'all are totally different. We we not going there in this video, not today. Black gay men are an extremely diverse class of individuals, so I'm not going to pretend to be the anthropologist on the group and talk like I have some kind of you know superior inside knowledge. But what I can say from lived experience as a black woman, as an unambiguously black woman. Some love us black women more than heterosexual black men. For many of them, we were their only loving hiding place as children. I had a gorgeous black gay friend in high school named Deontay. Honey, the boys could not resist him, okay? I mean, the popular boys who like to call people the F word that rhymes with maggot, right? They wanted him in a major way. He had to hold all their secrets, and um, when it was too much to bear, he loaded it. He loaded those things onto me, and I gladly bared him up on wings like a woman should, whose mother named her chocolate angel. Right. So this was actually a trend um, for me and the gays. Indeed, when my male choir director raped my thirteen-year-old boyfriend, we held it as a secret until we were adults. Before we decided on his mom's authority to testify until we put our choir director in jail. Um, that's another story. Let's go back to Deontay. One day as an adult, a decade later, right? Hadn't seen Deontay in forever. I went shopping for items I could not afford and needed to put something back. I used to do this a lot because I just, I have a love of toiletries and cosmetics. Like I'm not the girl with a shoe collection. I'm not the girl with, you know, the weaves everywhere and the eyeglasses and all, you know, the Chanel bags is a bad habit. That's not me. But honey, you go to my bathroom, you won't have room to put anything anywhere because I'm all about the cleansers, the toners, the cotton balls, the, the, the face masks, the hair masks, like honey toiletries and cosmetics it just that's my jam right there so guess who the cashier was at the counter it was Deontay so I'm looking at my items preparing to put some things back and he says to me with tears in his big brown gorgeous eyes that'll be a dollar 87 ma'am I said what his voice broke a dollar eighty seven ma'am when I realized what he was doing for me, he added, "Thanks for being a friend when I needed one." There were others in line, so I moved quickly, I collected my things, and I got in my car. I sat with my keys in the ignition without starting my car, and wept. I cried. He remembered me. 
He rewarded my kindness, my goodness, my loyalty, my innocence, my will to be a good person in a way so many heterosexual black males made me a mark for and took advantage of me for. He didn't. He paid it forward. Black gay men have hard-earned qualities. And it's time to sing their praises. Gay or straight, these men who uphold the qualities of traditional men until it gets until it gets to the bedroom, which is really none of our business and shouldn't be any of our concern. I don't really care to know what anyone gay or straight or otherwise does with their sexuality for the sake of children's innocence. As a former school teacher, I feel the need to say those things are always best left concealed between the two participating parties. Our gay black men have a way with words that has taken the world by storm. Did they get it from their black aunties, mother missionary, uh, so-and-so? Well, to start with, I mean, of course, but honey, when the Lord said be fruitful and multiply, these men created their own pigeon of the English language and multiplied that multiplicity until people of all colors and creeds wait for them to create a new term to hop on every single day. The brain, science, the brain of a homosexual, male or female, has a connecting tissue apparatus between the two hemispheres that is hyperfeminine. This leads to a level of empathy and intelligence that is often unmatched. <sighs> Not all the times, but you know, many times. The LGBTQ community back home where I'm from in Seattle is practically a mafia. They run things out there. I mean, they have the intelligence and the unity to do so. And again, all of that is hard earned. So I mean, what, did someone drag you, dox you, lie on you? If you have a gay black male friend, honey, that person will wish they never did. No one can throw hands and words like a gay black man. No one loves their mother more than a gay black man. No one forgives more than gay black men and, you know, old black aunties. And no one expresses compassion more than gay black men. This is not to say that I have not had problems with gay black men. It isn't to say there aren't exceptions and rules and this and that. But honestly, problems with the gay community for me, or at least I can let me not say that because I, I told you guys gay white men are a different story for me. But um, issues between me and gay black men have been very few and far in between. I mean, I've come across, you know, the lot who feel like they can hit women because we're both attracted to men, but more have protected me and refused to hit me and other women like me than, than not. More have believed in me than doubted me. More of them have praised my physical appearance than women and even heterosexual. I mean, gay men gave me my confidence when it comes to looking like a so-called drag queen being, you know, I'm built like something between, you know, a stripper and an athlete, right? I'm a big girl like uh, Jocelyn Hernandez, right? But even bigger. RuPaul taught me a portion of self-love as a child. I mean, I'm indebted to that to this day. Church choir? How without a black gay man? Y'all don't have a black gay guy? Okay, so then tell me your choir is weak and off key without telling me your choir is weak and off key. <laughs> okay. <laughs> gay black men have been a powerful force in our community for so long and are unsung heroes of the civil rights movement. Whether Kevin Samuels is gay or straight, his rise to power and fame has resulted in black men embracing their gay black brothers, which is long overdue. So to the gay black brothers out there, I, I mean, I love you, sis, but, you know, stop hitting on these straight boys when they don't want you. It's sexual harassment. Oh, wait. They do that to us, don't they? They do that to women who don't want to. Okay, never mind. Carry on. Gay black men have been scrutinized and ostracized from our community for far too long. 
to our prodigal gay sons, I say welcome back home and to the fold where you belong by birthright. We missed you. I'm up and out of here.